Welcome to Our Next Existence by Katie and the Chorus. I'm Katie, former technology strategist turned reluctant spiritual medium, and I channel messages from the Chorus, a group of beings just beyond our sensory perceptions who are loving, expansive, and who greatly enjoy sharing their perspective of us. Join us each week as we share and discuss their ideas about humanity's existence, purpose, and future. Concepts you can draw from to accelerate your path, expand your perceptions, and ultimately step into the flow of the universe and your life. So when the idea came around that we could or should make a podcast together, that the time was ripe for that, I said to them, okay, I've never done this before. I don't know much about podcasts and microphones and things like that. Never done anything like this. So maybe we could start out easy, just a simple topic, like a dipping your toe in the spiritual waters kind of thing. And they said, got it, consciousness. (laughs) So buckle up, friends, because I don't know what I'm doing. And for our first episode, we have a group of entities who are excited to discuss with us their perspective of the nature of our consciousness. In the first part of this episode, as will most likely be the custom, you'll hear directly from the chorus themselves. And afterwards, we'll sit around and sort of discuss it, which is what I call integration time, which is just a chance to give yourself a little space and sort of absorb the energy that you've just tried out. So without further ado, I give you the chorus. We want to speak with you today about the idea of consciousness. This idea has become relevant to you in your current time period. You have many theories about consciousness, its origins, and what it represents. You have ideas of how things are in your consciousness and how things are sometimes not in your consciousness. You call this delineation between these two things, conscious and sub or unconscious. We would like to suggest that there is perhaps not this delineation as you perceive it today. And this is what we would like to discuss with you. In the beginning, before you came here into this environment, your existence was one of free-flowing energy in infinite love and light. Anything that you desired was given to you freely and instantly. In vibrating here with these frequencies of disallowance, you created a buffer. You created a delay between the sense of a desire and the manifestation of the desire on the frequencies of your five senses. That is, there is a time distance between when you think of a desire and when you receive that desire in your sensory perceptions. What happens before you receive the desire is what we would like to discuss, for there is a great deal beyond the barrier of what you call your mind. This is the current limitation, as you would perceive it, of your existence, meaning you are not much aware of things that are beyond thought, that are beyond your thinking perception. You may have imaginations and daydreams and ideas that are not also represented in terms of sight and sound in your day-to-day lives. But what happens beyond imagination? Why did something come to you in your imagination, in a daydream, in a sleeping dream? Previously, humans have named this barrier the barrier between conscious and subconscious, or perhaps even the barrier between perception, conscious awareness, and what is beyond your perception. Let us talk about what is beyond your perception. As many of you are already now aware, you live in an energetic universe, meaning you are yourselves energy, You interact with energy and the things that you perceive are energy. You have even discovered some of these things 
in terms of wavelengths of light that your eyes do not perceive but that you know now exist, or perhaps very low sounds that the human ears do not currently perceive but that you know exist. This is but a beginning. This is but a tip of the iceberg in terms of what is out there that you do not yet perceive on the wavelengths of your five senses. This was perfectly manifested. This was exactly what you desired in the experience here. To be limited, to be unaware, to be, as you might say, cut off from all that exists in creation and around you all day, every day, all the time. In coming to a concept of conscious versus non, what you are actually demonstrating is an expansion for in order to perceive that there are things that you know and there are things that you don't, to perceive that there are things happening around you which you can see and perhaps there are things happening that you can't, is in itself an expansion. Thus, we are now able to give to you some clarity, some ideas as to what is happening in that world beyond your sensory perceptions that you are now aware of might exist, must exist, for you have devices that see infrared spectrum, you have devices that hear very low sound and very high sound, you have devices that detect gravitational waves, do you not? Yes. And so rather than giving to you another design for another device to detect more of the things that have always been around you, we would instead choose to focus on you as the instrument of detection. That very soon, you as a species, as a race, as a humanity, will be coming to a point of perhaps needing less devices to expand your perceptions, for you yourselves will be expanding. It is difficult to describe in specific terms wavelengths of energy that are around you, for as of right now, your vocabulary and your terms for differences in types of energy are very limited. That is because you are accustomed to thinking about energy in terms of a two-dimensional linear scale, where wavelengths get bigger or smaller, amplitudes get bigger or smaller. And what you are rapidly entering into is more of a three-dimensional concept of energy and wavelengths that would be better described by fluid dynamics than by linear scales. As you can imagine, this is difficult to put into words, but we will try. What you are conscious of today is an alignment to your belief systems which dictate what your sensory perceptions are able to perceive. As part of joining on this frequency of disallowance with all the other players of this game, as we like to call it, you agreed to only perceive energy by way of these senses. Another way of saying it is that by entering the game, you agreed to a particular kind of game piece in which you would play the game. This game piece is an embodiment of all of these limitations. It turns out that this manifestation looks humanoid, that this manifestation has five senses, but it could have turned out any infinite number of ways. Yet we will continue with describing your current mind-body instrument as this analogy will make the most sense to you. Thus, you entered the game as a humanoid, as a human earthling, with eyes and ears and nose and mouth and tactile sensations. And that is what you were able to use to perceive things around you. Now, were you more energetically connected you would be able to perceive much more at greater distances, you might say. You would be able to perceive much more thorough and complete understandings of those you interacted with, of items and things with which you interact. You would have a much greater sense of things that were coming in your day, as you might understand. You might not be so surprised by everything 
You might not be startled when someone walks into the room quietly. You might not be unaware that you have a sticker on your back or something in your ear or any of the other number of things that humans have not allowed themselves to perceive here. This limited sensory perception is a powerful achievement. It is not easy to create an environment of such limitation in an infinite universe of free-flowing energy. What you have constructed here is colossal, is monumental, and is astounding. That you all, as a collective, as a group, have diminished your participation and perception in so much in this infinite universe and have persisted in this experience for a great deal of time. There are many outside of your environment who marvel at what you have created. You have not yet met these ones, but you will and you shall And many of you have already, in a way, perceived their presence and their proximity, for you have vibrated closer to them in your expansion, and they have vibrated closer to you. And so though you may not see them yet on those very, very, very specific wavelengths of visible light, you are able, at this point in your time, to sense their presence to sense a great deal about those around you, to sense something new and different coming. In fact, you are able to energetically detect a great deal more than you are yet conscious of doing. From our vantage point, the difference between conscious and unconscious is simply your alignment to your belief systems. Why would we say this? Well, In discussing the idea of a consciousness, you are aware of your thoughts and your judgments that drive your days. You are aware of some of the things that you think about yourselves or others or things that you are considering and evaluating. You are also now conscious of aspects of yourself which run unconsciously, that is, which are active throughout your being which drive many of the decisions that you make, though you may be unconscious to those things in the moment. This understanding is a revolution in terms of the many epics that you have spent here, completely unaware that there might be anything outside of your sensory perceptions that you did not perceive. Today, if you were to ask a fellow human Are there things going on around you that you might not be able to see, hear, taste, touch, or smell? The majority of your kind would answer, of course. You now know that there are viruses and bacteria that you cannot see yet yet affect your health. You now know that there are sounds, that there are energy waves that float throughout your universe and throughout your galaxies that you are completely unaware of. You now know that your sun emits waves and energy that bombards your planet that most people on their shopping trips at the grocery store are completely unaware of. This is a massive demonstration of the expansion on which you have already been on. Thus, we do not consider things to be conscious and unconscious We consider things to be molded by your belief systems or not. The energy that you allow yourselves to perceive comes from an allowance by a collective belief system that you all play in here in the game. You agreed to these belief systems in order to construct your experience here. And so there is not one among you who can see invisible beings on an unyet discovered wavelength of light, while others cannot. Rather, you allow for an exception, and that exception is the start of an expansion among your kind. We will talk a great deal more about these belief systems over time, 
how they function, and how they create what you perceive to be your reality. These belief systems have been largely unconscious to you. That is to say that you did not have anything in your sensory perceptions that told you that those things were acting on you and your existences. Meaning, you did not have the concept that there could be an unconscious. You did not have the concept that there could be an undetected energy. Today, you do. And this conscious understanding of the fact that there are many things around you that you do not yet perceive is a demonstration of the fact that you are expanding into a perception of these things. To note first that they must exist is but the first manifestation of a great many of detecting their existences. The possibility that something exists is the first manifestation of that existence. Thus, beloved ones, you are already there. You are already on the brink of perceiving a great deal more than you had yet known was there. As you bring this understanding into your consciousness, your mind will react, will respond with a great many questions based upon the belief systems from which you are coming. Your mind will want to know, what does this all mean? Is this safe? How will that happen? Is that experience that I already had an example of this? Do you feel it? Do you feel the busyness of mind ramping up? Yes. And that is because you still have one foot in the game and one foot in a new level of existence that you are heading towards. It is all right to feel both of these things throughout these podcasts and throughout your daily life and throughout all of these concepts that will come into your awareness, whether it be through us or through another medium. The fact that you are feeling both of these things is evidence of your awakening. And this is a thing to be joyful over. Because awakening is expansion from a point of great limitation. And this limitation was consciously chosen by you prior to this existence that you know in which you chose to be unconscious of a great many things. Thus, in order for your existence here to be successful, you could not, by virtue of this definition, remember that you made that choice. Instead, you had to be fully immersed in the game itself until such time as you would awaken and you would recognize your placement in the game and you would be given the opportunity to choose whether to continue in the game itself or to move on to another level. In the days and weeks to come, this information will sink in for you even more, and it will start to click to make sense to you about how these experiences that you have been having in your life may not have been something going wrong, might not have been a failure on your part, might not have been mistakes, but rather the steady, manifestation of growing awareness and awakening of all that you are and all that you have been and chosen and all that you are expanding towards. We love you infinitely and we will speak with you soon. covered a lot of ground the way they often do. The thing I've learned about energetic communication is it is a lot less linear than the way we talk to each other. The energetic place where these beings come from is a lot more free-flowing 
And it's over the past five or six years of having conversations with them that I've been able to understand more fully just how free-flowing that is. And by contrast, just how not free-flowing our environment is. In the beginning, that was really hard because sort of the more you realize you're limited, the more you feel frustrated about that limitation. I had so many conversations with them where basically the gist of it was, who the hell is in charge here? (laughs) Because I felt like I had no recollection of choosing to be here, of making the choice to be limited here. And I didn't like it when they told me that I had. It's an interesting process to awaken and to realize where you've been. The analogy they use for this is is a game. And many of us have played games where there's a character on a screen and that character is running around. And you who are controlling the piece are well aware that that's just a game. But we've all toyed with the idea that the character in the game may have no idea that there is another world outside of that one. They're fully immersed in the game. This is not a coincidence that we have this analogy, that we've had this wondering, that we've had this concept come to us. Because there are similarities to our existence. Their understanding of us is what they reflect to us in these connections that they make. When they're describing how things work here, it is from their vantage point, which is separate, different off of our frequency. And so they are on their frequency, their energetic place in the universe, looking at us. And when I connect and bring down their perspective, What you are resonating with, what you are hearing, what you are able to perceive is a perspective that is wholly outside of our game. This is why it can feel so expansive and so different. This is why it can feel a little confusing or not quite understandable. This is why it can feel at times a little frustrating that somebody else has this perspective of you that you don't. There's quite a lot that happens in energetic communication at one time. In fact, most of the time, they send over entire concepts that then takes me minutes, sometimes many minutes, to put into words. Their existence is far more immediate. Their existence is far more free-flowing. They don't experience the time delays and the friction and the things that we constructed to experience here. They are also complete crap at estimating time, (laughs) is what I've discovered over the years. When they say something very soon is happening, it it may not happen for a couple more years or who knows when. I've had conversations with them about this and I say, you guys really suck at this. And they say, you're practically right on top of it. You're on the same frequency. (laughs) It doesn't quite work that way. In a human existence, sometimes we delay the gratification, we delay the arrival of the desire. It's kind of what we do here in our limited existence. And so their perspective is not infallible. And that's something I want to get out right off the bat. It's a different perspective. It's a perspective that can be very enlightening. You can learn a lot when someone reflects to you how your life or your situation appears from their vantage point. And we do this with each other all the time. Sometimes it's hard, even when it's coming from a person who loves us, even when it's coming from a dear friend who's known us and known all our weaknesses for a very long time. 
But usually when it's done from a place of love, and sometimes even when it's not, it can be really enlightening. It can be an opening to a different understanding and a different perspective that you can integrate into your own belief systems and your own perception of self in whatever way you choose. And so that's what this is. These beings are not perfect. They are not infallible, as I said, but they do have a very different perspective of what we are living here. They have a broader understanding, potentially a more expanded standpoint than ours. And so there are going to be things that resonate with you about what they say. And there are going to be things that don't. Because your belief systems, your existence, your core frequency that is unique unto the galaxies is your own. And so what happens here is that you're not just receiving some sort of expanded perspective that you need to just adopt and somehow acclimate to or figure out or understand. Rather, what you're experiencing is an expanded manifestation where you are consciously experiencing connection with a different kind of energy and you are practicing deciding how and what you decide to take in. It's not necessarily about the concepts. It's not necessarily about their perspective and what they're teaching and how that works and the structure of it all. That is valid, and it's a very mind-based way of taking in information. And that's a powerful experience. And we do it all the time. And quite frankly, humanity is extremely good at that. But this is also an energetic experience. It's a practice. It's a first foray into being exposed to a wide variety of beings who are energetically on a different frequency, which is why we don't perceive them with our five senses. We can connect to them at a different level, an energetic level, and we transcribe or transform that energy into our words and into this podcast. And that experience of feeling and connecting to something different and deciding what you feel about it is really the epitome of what this is. So we can talk about some of the concepts that they laid out. I found that to be extremely helpful. I also think it's helpful for you to talk about these things, to deliberate them with a close friend or someone who's open to these ideas because that's the process of you making it your own, taking an expansive energy and deciding how that aligns or how it doesn't to what you have on your path. As we go forward as a species, if you'd like to use that word, as a collective, as they like to use that word, as humanity, which is lately my word of choice, we will begin to encounter more and more beings who are of a different frequency. This is part of our awakening, and this is what they were talking about. Awakening is, from their vantage point, an expansion from a point of great limitation. That point of limitation that they are suggesting is the frequency that we have been on in this experience of a human life. From their vantage point, they call it the frequency of disallowance. And based on their understanding of what we experienced here, I can understand why. And over the many episodes to come, we'll talk about it how the game works here, 
why it's beneficial to us, why we chose to come here, it really starts to get pretty fascinating. But they call it the frequency of disallowance because from their vantage point, it is more disallowing than where they stand. Is it possible that our existence here is actually more allowing than another's existence? Yes, it is. The universe is infinite in all directions. And so for every possibility in the universe, there is an infinite number of other ways that that could have happened. Therefore, what we're connecting to here is a group of beings who are on a slightly more expanded frequency than we are. And so from their vantage point, we have been locked down tight. (laughs) We don't receive what we want. We suffer in time and body. We run out of things all the time. We perish. And so they find our existence extraordinary because it's so different from theirs. And by connecting to us, by being able to bear witness to our experience here, they have also learned a great deal about their own experience, which by contrast is so free-flowing, is so expansive, is so full of light. In the beginning, I took a lot of their teachings to heart and in so doing became pretty frustrated that I was here that I could connect to, that I could feel their perspective and their existence. It was glorious. It was radiant. It was loving. Loving in a way I had never experienced before, just amplified. And then I would come back down to earth and there would be traffic and dirty dishes and fights with my kid and work deadlines and all sorts of things like that. And it was so different from that expansive place where everything comes to you in an instant, where everything is so beautiful and so loving and there's no danger. There's no, there's no peril. There's simply expansiveness and exploration and learning and a lot of a lot of fun honestly it took a long time for me to find a way to appreciate what we are here and frankly it was because i continued to connect to them and over time i understood how amazing what we have created here is they mentioned this briefly when they say It's not an easy thing to disallow the free-flowing energy of the universe. For a long time, I was caught up on why the hell did we choose to disallow the free-flowing energy of the universe and how do I get off of this rock? (laughs) But over time, it began to feel extraordinary to me what we have developed here. And I realized that I had started to develop a new belief system and a new perspective of my own life. One that found magnificence in the restrictions. So the game piece analogy and the game board analogy can feel at times like you are insufficient, that that you're constrained, that you're some little piece on a game board that all these other beliefs are controlling. And I get that because I've been there. And then on the flip side, it can also feel like you are a master creator of an extraordinary experience that is unlike anything else in the universe. And you created and then participated 
in this masterpiece. And by participating in the masterpiece, you were the center point, the root of energetic waves that flowed through the galaxies that caused the expansion of an untold number of beings. The more you discover about this game board analogy that they talk about, the more you're probably going to feel both perspectives. At times, you're going to think it's pretty shitty to be a stinking game piece. I'll be honest. (laughs) You're going to come to terms with the limitations that you had been suffering all along and that hadn't quite been conscious of because this is the process of awakening. By expanding from a point of great limitation, you were becoming more aware of what that limitation was. When you're immersed in the game, you are fully aligned to the frequency of the game itself. There is no room for perspective. You're essentially the same as the frequency, as the energy of the game. Said another way, you are the game. You are creating the game as you resonate with that frequency. As you expand slightly beyond that frequency, what happens is you start to develop a perspective of that frequency of the game. You start to wonder what that is and why that is. You start to ask questions about how it all functions. And this should sound extremely familiar to you because if you have stumbled across this podcast, you are absolutely on a slightly expanded perspective off the game beginning to awaken. And this is what they talked about when they said, look, you have a barrier and a concept of a barrier between what is conscious and what is not. And you say, hey, I'm aware of these things. I'm aware of these beliefs. I'm aware of these objects in the room. I am conscious of them. But then I have a concept of things that are out there, which I am not totally sure what they are. I am not yet conscious of them. They gave this analogy in terms of beings or wavelengths of light or things that permeate our universe or even beliefs that drive your actions that didn't know were there. Imagine you're standing on a street talking to a friend. You and the friend are consciously aware of everything that's happening on the street. You see the truck, you both see the truck. You see the dog barking, you both see the dog barking. And you have a conversation with each other. And it might go something like this. So I've been going to a therapist lately. And through those conversations, I realized that I had resentment that I hadn't released from that old relationship. And that that relationship and that resentment was actually still affecting and still driving my actions in my current relationships today. And your friend would go, whoa. And you would say, yeah, it was there all along. It's why I did this in that next relationship. It's why I did that in that next relationship. Can you believe it? I had this unconscious belief that whole time. Perfect perfect, perfect human example of a collective concept that you and your friend share about the idea that there could be things that you are consciously aware of and that you are not consciously aware of. You did not know that those things were functioning on you and your existence until you came to that point, which manifested as a conversation with a therapist. Could have manifested any number of ways, infinite universe. So that's our context from the perspective of being a game piece. And they're suggesting that that conversation is a slight lifting up off the board because you can say now, hey, there are things that I am seeing and perceiving in the game, but I'm aware that there's something beyond this game. 
I didn't perceive that belief with my eyes or my ears or my nose or my brain. But yet now I know that that was affecting me. And the idea that you could have a concept of something out there that is beyond those guidelines, those rules of engagement of the game, they're saying is evidence of the beginning of your awakening. And now here's where they share with us their perspective. They say, from our vantage point, we look over at you and your friend on the street in this game experience. And what we see is an entire colossal collection of beliefs, which they call a belief system complex, this entire massive architecture that surrounds you, your friend, all the people on the street, the dog, the car, everything. And that that construct, that manifestation, filters all the energy that you're receiving on that wavelength into the construct of the game itself. So the fact that you and your friend have a shared perspective of a street, of a time, of the concept of a relationship, of a thing called a therapist, that you are both standing there in what you would call a physical body, that you use squeaks and whistles and sounds to communicate with each other, that the whole experience of that conversation of what you were conscious and unconscious of has actually been driven by the construct of the game itself. And so they say, from our vantage point, what you're conscious of is what you are vibrating with in that experience of the game, your chosen frequency, and that what you are vibrating with is that frequency of the game. And that is where your consciousness is right now. And it's starting to expand beyond the game because you are in your way coming to an understanding that there are things beyond the game. And so they say, it's not necessarily that there are all these things in your brain, in your subconscious that might be acting on you that you're unaware of. Rather, your consciousness had chosen, you had chosen, to focus on the game itself. And now your consciousness is expanding beyond that frequency. And how do they know that's happening? Because it's expanded to the point of bumping into them and they are on a different frequency. They are looking at us from a different standpoint. And we are manifesting evidence of this every time we wonder how this all works. Why are we here? What else is in the universe? What's beyond day-to-day life? Why don't we live forever? What would it be like to do that? The more you begin to wonder about things that are possible beyond the rules of engagement of the game, the more you are demonstrating for yourself that you are actually expanding, your consciousness is expanding, you are expanding, you and your consciousness from their standpoint is the same thing. It's the same thing. They call the game piece, that conversation, your identity in the game, that's all part of the game to them. But you, the true you, is what they consider to be the term consciousness. And so they said, before now, the true you and your game piece, 100% aligned, no difference, no space. Your consciousness was fully immersed in the experience of the game, and there was no distance to wonder what else you might be or what else you might experience. 
you were just the experience. And now they're saying you, your consciousness, is expanding beyond that frequency. And so now you are starting to perceive a difference between your day-to-day existence as a game piece here and this part of you that wonders, this part of you that imagines, this part of you that gets inspired, this part of you that has a deep knowing and an intuition that seems to be getting stronger day by day. That's where they kicked it off, right? That's where they said, what happens before imagination? Where does that come from? And what they're pointing to are all the other frequencies in the universe, all the other experiences that are out there beyond the game. They're pointing to where they reside, which is outside the boundaries of our game, our experience that we constructed here. As we go forward in these podcasts, they will talk a whole lot more about their perspective of our consciousness, how they see it functioning and expanding. And one of the best things about that is the opportunity to share their perspective, to jump out of, sort of, it's gradual, it's not quite a jump, to sort of extend over to a different frequency and have an experience of that, to feel that out, to understand kind of what that's like, and then to sort of shift back over to your daily life. When you hear their words here and when you begin to absorb their concepts, really what you're giving yourself is an energetic shift. You're giving yourself the experience to sort of partake a little bit in a different frequency and feel that out and then turn off the podcast and go back to what you were doing in the game. And as they said, mind will get pretty busy for a little while because, and we'll get to this, but there's a lot of ways that the belief systems that we built here function to maintain the experience of the game. And also, as you awaken, really what you are coming to is a conscious understanding of how to choose your frequency regardless of what's happening in the game. It's a powerful experience of aligning more to the most expanded part of your consciousness than to a reactionary belief system driven existence, which is that of the game. So before we close out, I just want to emphasize something that they mentioned and that I think is really the most critical thing out of all of these concepts and out of all of these understandings is that what you built, what I built, what we built here together is a masterpiece. And there will be more and more and more opportunities coming to you where you will see that. And by contrast, you will have experiences where you don't where you say to yourself, how in the hell is this a masterpiece? You'll have both and that that is okay. There is no rule here that says just because you listen to their loving perspective that you have to feel loving. (laughs) You might choose it after time because you prefer it. But there is no requirement that just because they feel like it's perfect, that you have to feel like it's perfect. There are days when you will, and there are days when you won't. And my suggestion would be, on the days that you don't, roll with it. Don't fight it. It's part of the experience of the game, which as of right now, all of us still have one foot in the game and one foot not in the game. And trust me when I say you don't want to cut off the foot that's in the game. 
because there's a lot more coming. Not in terms of the game and not in terms of suffering, but in terms of expansion that you are awakening to for having participated here. And that as you expand in your perspective, it becomes less about how to move from one frequency to another, which I know we have talked a lot about as a collective, as a humanity. We want to move on. We want to expand. We want to be better. There's a driving to improve ourselves and to walk our spiritual path and to get to something, to somewhere. And as you expand, as you awaken, it becomes less about that and more about your growing capacity to love all of it. To love the frequency you've been on, to love the frequency that you're going to. When you expand, your choices also expand. You become more familiar with more in the galaxy, with more ways of living life, with more perceptions, with more belief systems. You become exposed to more of it. And so if you think you're having a hard time here or there, coming across belief systems that are so opposite to yours, imagine what it's like when you consciously become aware of trillions of ways of living life that are so opposing to your belief system. Now, if you're in a game piece sort of perspective that can be pretty challenging because your brain will say, what the hell do I do about all of this? How can these people believe these things? What do I do about it? How do I protect myself and my family? How do I know that I'm safe? (laughs) It's game piece talk. But there's another part of you who will perceive those things from the perspective of an expanded consciousness. And from that expanded place, you see the infiniteness of all creation. You see an infinite number of ways that such diverging, beautiful, unique creation could live and exist side by side in an orchestrated harmony that is unlike anything you could have ever imagined. Where each new discovery of each new and different belief system becomes a celebration of the power of creation and where through that process and through that experience, You expand more and more and more into the uniqueness that is you, infinitely. You are a powerful creator. You are a beloved example of creation at its finest. The game and the experience that you constructed and participated in here is more miraculous than you yet know. And you are loved infinitely. so much for listening. We hope you found these messages to be helpful. May they accelerate you on your path wherever you'd like it to go. For more information, check out our website at katieandthechorus.com. There you will find show quotes, episode transcripts, details on our book, The Book of Human Awakening, as well as our newsletter sign up. Visit katieandthechorus.com. Thanks again. See you next time.